Welcome back to the WIET 42 Red Zone Show, and I am now honored to be joined by Keith McCants, former Alabama linebacker, All-American, and NFL player. You were an outstanding player for the Alabama Crimson Tide. You had a standout year in 1989. Take me back to some of the time that you got to spend at Alabama and what some of those memories are for you. Wow. Wow. That's, 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 that's deep. I remember the, while everybody was sleeping, this guy by the name of Derek Thomas used to wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, you want to go to the next level, this is what it's going to take. We go out there pushing Broncos at 3.30 in the morning, running stadium steps. So the, my standing out, you know, really, I owe all that to Derek Thomas. And one of the things we did, when everybody else was tired, we wasn't. When everybody was lacking, we didn't. It was an extra effort that we put in. And I think the University of Alabama tradition, they call the Lord Gym, that's something that we that's something that we carry out. That's something that we do. And but the, the four fingers that hold up in the fourth quarter, that, that's a that's a um, dedication to Rich Wingo and the Lord Gym. It make, make you we know that if when we come out at that fourth quarter, we feel to leave it all on the field. Nineteen ninety, you were drafted by the Buccaneers, fourth overall. What influenced your decision to leave Alabama a year early? Wow, Lauren, I'm glad you asked me that question. Um, to clear up, because a lot of Alabama alumni just want to know why I left early. I didn't leave because of the money. I left because I was already injured. I was already hurt. And uh, you go to school to take care of your family. Being a student athlete is one of the most toughest things there is to do. I was rated the number one player in the country out of 600,000. And the NFL was beating my door down. It's like, you need to go. If you don't go now, you may not make it. And they put this in my head, and I thought about it. And I didn't play that much my freshman year, my rookie year, because I was already injured. I played seven, seven six years in the league with one leg, which caused me to um, become addicted to drugs. And I made too much money for them to put me on the sideline and stay in the National Football League. I'm sorry, I just got to tell you this. The National Football League, you so, when you step out of there, it become a business. And I got nothing against them, because that's what it is. But at Alabama, or any college, you play for the love of the game, the tradition of the game, and you play for all your heart. But when you play for money, and you become part of their property, and some of the things they do, we don't pay you X amount of dollars to sit on the bench. And for those people out there that don't know, when you, it's one thing to get to the NFL, it's a whole other thing to stay there. I never knew. I was just a kid that loved the, loved the game of football. And plus, I, I loved the paychecks as well. <laughs> so I kept doing it. But when they came and told me I was an addict and released me, and um, I didn't know what that was. It plagued my body. Um, I ended up going to jail. I ended up doing things I wouldn't normally do. Don't try to commit suicide a few times. Um, lost the will to live. Had nerves break down. Lost millions of dollars. Lived in the streets. Ate out the garbage can. I was like a homeless. And um, it just, I forgot who Keith McCance was. A tremendous story and testimony you share there. I, unfortunately, 12 years ago, lost both of my parents to prescription drug overdoses. And while I don't understand addiction from first person, I understand it from being on the outside looking in and watching them battle addiction through their chronic pain. What is your message to those out there that maybe don't understand addiction mm -hmm. and have choices that they're faced with in hopes of not going down that same road and dealing with what you've had to deal with throughout much of your life? Getting, getting to where I am today, I went to several different rehabs. One of the rehab facilities I went to that stands out to me is called Reawakening. And I met, I met some great people there. I met, I met the staff. They really didn't have no idea who Keith McCants was because I didn't either. But they really took such good care of me. Most rehabs are business. But this was more like family. And now I love it so much I started to work there. As a matter of fact, we're offering a $100,000 scholarship to people that suffer from the disease of addiction anywhere in the state of Alabama. Wow. And um, I'm a part of that, and, and, and Farid and Omid, and the, the owners, Sean, and we, we so, I want to reach out and touch somebody. I want to give people hope like I have hope. Because when, when you lose the will to live, it's very, it, it's, it's devastating. You become dangerous. And my, and my psychoanalysis class, the doctor stated I was homicidal, suicidal, and couldn't be trusted. 
But God did something for me I couldn't do for myself. He really did. He gave me the will, not only did he give me the will to live, he gave me the ability to touch people's lives around the world. And I tell you what, I'm going full force. You've got a project you're working on, a book, and I know you don't want to yes. give too much away on what this book entails. I'm looking to drop my book in between January and, and February. This book is the title is called My Dark Side in the NFL. It explains how, the, how my life got derailed and how I struggle and how that I was pushed to the side like a lot of, lot of, a lot of players are done after they leave the NFL. The live life, the lost ability to live life on life term as a normal human being. It really nearly cost me my life. And I talk about drugs in the NFL, which I consumed a lot of pills, and then morphine, cortisone shots, and um, which, which turned me into something that I wasn't. And instead of losing my life, I decided I'm gonna fight for my life. This book has come out in my life. They call it the Rocky story. A lot of what you've become, you credit the Crimson Tide, your career at Alabama, you get a chance to go back there today yes. and be part of the excitement of homecoming, your alma mater, and everything that is the Alabama Crimson Tide. How excited are you for this opportunity? Man, I'm a, I, went from, I went from a superstar player to, to one of Alabama's biggest fans. And I'm loving, I'm, I'm loving it. I can't wait. I find myself out there throwing, throwing pillars at the TV. <laughs> you know, I want to be out there. They ain't what you're doing. You're crossing over. You're doing this. You're like, I'm hollering. Can't nobody watch TV with me. So uh, I'm so I'm so excited to come back, and, and I'm excited to bring a lot of friends back with me because this is where it started. This is where it started. At. This is where I found the, the, the tradition. You play football in high school. You play it. Play it. You play it in little league. But when you come to the University of Alabama, you play football. You play it for your whole state and the whole. You play it in front of the whole country, and that's right there is is something serious. Former Alabama linebacker, NFL player, and what I like to call motivator, Keith McCants, thank you so much for joining us here today. Enjoy the game. We're back in just a moment here on the WIAT 42 Red Zone.